morning my father and my Lord Jesus Christ the son of our father in heaven I am calling you Emmanuel because you are God together with us and your name will be praised and it is being praised I want to thank you because of the prayer for the nation of Kenya and I want to thank you because specifically this time we are praying for ourselves. You spoke to me and you said, encourage your people. The others who are discouraged, they have prayed for a long time and nothing doing. And you have spoken to me to help them understand the reason why. I pray that even after they pray together with me, that you are going to end their waiting and they are going to receive their answers in their lives because you are God. I want to thank you because of your word in Jeremiah chapter 33 and verses 3. Call unto me and I will show you great and unsearchable things that you know not. Father, I am asking you that even as we are praying today for us, and for our prayers to be answered, that you are going to help us understand reasons why sometimes our prayers are delayed and how we should go about it. May you receive all the glory and may you be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Glory be to God. How are you people? and praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I am born again and I love Jesus Christ as my personal Savior even this time of intercession. I want to encourage you that have been praying together with me. I want to encourage you that is following me and you have been praying for a long time and nothing doing. Your prayers have been delayed. Your prayers have taken long to be answered. This night, the Lord spoke to me to encourage you and to pray that he is going to help you understand why and your time has come. Do you have my number? 
Are you saying, woman of God, you have been a blessing to me? Are you still following me and you have not subscribed? The more you subscribe and like and share, many will get to like, to listen to Apostle Damaris and you will be preaching together with me. Glory be to God. Amen. And I want to appreciate you that have subscribed because now God can help us to do live here in this platform. May God bless you, may God help you, and may God continue to, and, uh, to expand you on every side. Even you that is watching me on Oracle Television, visit my YouTube, Apostle Damaris Mumbi, and Kegodo, and subscribe that you may preach together with me. Do you have my number? Are you saying, woman of God, you have been a blessing to me? We are heading to just few months and we shall be four years online and I have enjoyed myself mentoring you, praying together with you and encouraging you as you are encouraging me. Somebody encouraged me this week and I was so happy and that person said, Apostle Tamaris, the work that you have been doing for this nation in prayer, Kenya will serve you. May God bless you for those encouraging texts and may God continue blessing you. This is my pay bill number. I want your 1,000 every month. I want your 500 shillings every month. Two kinds of people. One is the kind of those that will help me and support me with their 1,000. And number two, those that are going to help me with their 500 shillings. Okay, let me start with number two. Number two is number one, 500 shillings. Number two, 1,000 shillings. And this is my pay bill number 400222. My account number, it is 173 hash. Put your name or partnership and forward your transaction to my Mpesa number, and this is 0746553997. Glory be to God. It is good to always plant and be a blessing to every word, every prayer that I pray together with you. Amen. Now, today we are going to look at a few things, and one, it is the importance of prayer. I know some of you are saying, woman of God, you have not finished about the foundation. Don't mind, I'll get there. But this month of January is always the first fruit of, 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 of to God, amen, from us. And last night, the Lord spoke to me and said, encourage some of your uh, viewers, some of your people, because they have prayed for a long time and they have given up and some feel like quitting in salvation and I really prayed for you. And from this day forward, God is going to answer your prayers. Amen. I want us to go to, uh, to Luke chapter 11. This is the scriptures I'll start with. Luke chapter 11. So we may not pray much in the prayers of the nation of Kenya. Maybe two prayers or one. Because I want to encourage somebody. Amen. Now Luke chapter 11 and verses 22. We are going to go to Luke chapter 11 and verses 22. The Bible says, but when, as, uh -huh, but when, okay, 21, maybe we can start from 21. When a strong man armed keeps his palace, his goods are in peace. When a strong man armed keeps his palace, the strong man is you in a positive way. Amen. Number two, the strong man is Satan. When he has taken all the goods and he has possessed it and he has said, this is my goods and he has, and he has just fenced it and caged it. And that is why your prayers are taking long. Amen. Because they have virtues, they are blessings that you have that the enemy is still holding it. Amen. And the Bible says in verses 22, but when a stronger than he shall come upon him. Look at that. Now, when it comes to chapter 20 at 11, 21, in this case, we are going to take it as Satan. Chapter 11, 21. When a strong man armed keeps his palace, his goods are in peace. Yes, we are going to take it to Satan. He has taken your destiny, marriage, there is no peace. 
you are not even married and if you are married there is no peace he has taken your your, your blessings your stars he has taken your prosperity he has sat on your certificates he has sat on your prayers that cannot amen the bible says when a strong man armed keeps his palace his goods are in peace look at that we are going to take the strong man is satan verse 2 verse 22 but when a stronger than he shall come upon him this is jesus christ this is the battle between jesus and the beast and of course the beast is always defeated and jesus christ is always lifted every time you are fighting a battle it is it is a victory on your side the bible says but when the stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him he takes from him all his armor wherein he trusted and divides his spoil look at that that when satan collects your opportunities satan steals the bible says in john chapter 10 and verses 9 and 10 that the, the devil comes to steal kill and destroy but i've come look at that verses 9 The Bible says in verse 10, the thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And when you look number 9, the Bible says I am the door. So if Jesus is the door in your life as the strong man, when the strong person comes, he will find Jesus at your door the strongest one at your door and this is where now this word comes to pass that and they shall have it jesus comes to give uh, to me, that he may ha, that he may give you life and that you may have it in abundance when jesus is the door as the stronger one at your door when the strong come he will not succeed amen let's go back to math uh, to mark chapter 11 look chapter 11 but when the stronger than he verse 22 comes upon him when jesus comes against satan who is strong yes who has occupied who is armed who has taken your blessing you have tried to break forth to collect but he is ah my friend ask me i know what i'm talking about the enemy is wicked before you reach the strong man he has guards in every door if he is a strong man with the gates he is not having one gate one gate is small you will even if it is one gate to reach to your enemy to collect your your blessings there is an army that is guarding that door you have to bring that army down and if the army brings you down this is where your prayers are hindered This is where your prayers are delayed because they have arrested you. Yes. But if you are strong and the Lord Jesus goes ahead of you, he will bring down if it is 10 gates to reach the strong man and to collect your blessings, then every gate has enemies, has army that in that kingdom that is that is guarding that gate and you have to fight them to bring them down. so that you can come out with your spoils and this is why the bible says when a strong man armed keeps his palace his goods are in peace he has stolen your dream he has stolen your marriage he has stolen your education he has stolen your children they are drunkards they are vagabonds and you have prayed and prayed and prayed and god is still telling you this son is a prophet this girl is 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 a great person you have prayed 10 years 15 years 30 years you are giving up why it is because the enemy of your children the enemy of your promotion it is strong and he has kept his you know all that he has he is guarded yes he is armed and his goods are at peace but when you invite our lord jesus christ he gives you directions He gives you instructions. He gives you way out. Then verses 22 comes to pass. The Bible says, "But when the stronger than him, stronger than the one that is holding you captivity, captive." The Bible says, 
he shall come upon him. He will fight him. He will fight the strong man. And the Bible says, and he will overcome him. Jesus will never fail. Even, and Jesus works through us. Yes. And the Bible says, he takes from him all his armor. He takes from him all his armor, wherein he trusted and divides his spoils. In other words, he takes his armies at the gate. He takes his weapons from his hands. He, he disarms the enemy of your promotion, the enemy of your marriage. How come God is telling you are getting married? You are 21. Now you, be, you are 23. You go to 25, 30. You are now 45. You are 50. You have never married. But the same, same dream is coming. It is because there is captive. You have been held captive and you have to deal with it. Amen. Now, there are things I have written here and I pray that God is going to help you to understand. Amen. Now, you have to learn how to pray. You have to learn how to pray because prayer, it is communion with God. The same way you are having Holy Communion. The same way a man and a woman, you have to commune sexually. If you don't, in communication, in your sexual life, then there is big, big, big space, gap between you. Yes, it becomes a gap. You feel like this is my brother, this is my sister. The Bible says that you have to have daily communion with God. And the only way you can have daily communion, it is prayer. One time Jesus said, one time Jesus said, and I want us to go to that scripture. I wrote it here because sometimes I forget it. We are going to look at something here. Uh -huh, let me get it here. Matthew. Look at Matthew. I forget this one. Matthew, it is also in Mark. But we are going to go to Matthew chapter 26 and verses 40. Jesus knew that he's going to be tempted and he took his people, his 12 disciples, excluding one they were he went and to the to the to the garden get some men to pray look at this what happened look at what happened the bible says in verses 40 he was telling them can't you pray just for one minute prayer just for one hour prayer i tell people a mature christian prays at least one hour at least one hour there are ministers of the gospel who don't pray even one hour. 30 minutes is enough, which is wrong. Children pray for less than one hour. Yes, but if you are a mature Christian, you go for one hour or two or three or the hours that God wants you to go. Now, the Bible says, and he comes to his disciples and finds them asleep and says to Peter, what would you not watch with me? What? Could you not watch with me for one hour? They did not even know that they will not see Jesus again. They did not know this was the last time they are seeing Jesus because they would have prayed without sleeping. <laughs> this is where we are told the thief comes and when he comes, you will not even know the hour. Now the Bible says that can't you pray even one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Pray for one hour. You have to have one hour to have communion with God daily. If you don't pray with God, there is separation. There is separation. There are a few things I've written here that I've learned. I've learned that prayer is spiritual. It is a heavenly and spiritual operation in the life of a Christian. Prayer. It is a heavenly and spiritual function, not even operation, function of a Christian. Somebody that is born, yes, in the life of a Christian. Number two, I've written here that the prayer shuts Satan out. Every time you pray, you become strong. You become strong. Your prayers makes the word of God to be strong, makes the angels to be strong. Not that they are not strong, get me right. But the more you pray, the more you get stronger in prayer, then your prayers will make God do that which he wants to do in your life. Okay, maybe you are proving me wrong. Let's go to Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Let's go to Psalms 103 verses 20 and verses 21. These are things, there are many, but... Uh, 
I pray I'm going to help you out because I was told to encourage somebody. Psalms 103 and verses 20 and verses 21. The Bible says, Bless the Lord, you his angels, that excel in strength. You his messengers, that excel in strength. Amen. That do his commandments, hearkening to the voice of his word. Every time you pray, one hour in tongues, or one hour you just speak the word of God. Like for example, maybe I am praying for somebody that needs healing. Yes, somebody needs healing. And I will go to Psalms 107. Maybe I go to Psalms 107 and verses 20. Let me see. And I'm praying for somebody sick and I want to pray for this person. I will say the Bible says in Psalms 107 and verses 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Father, let your word heal this sick person. Then you enter in tongues. As you are entering in tongues, this is where the scripture is fulfilled. Psalms 103 and verses 20. Bless the Lord, you his angels. Angels will, 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 will work or they will, they will follow your prayers because you are using the word of God and you are speaking in tongues. Yeah, there are angels who cannot understand English. There are angels who will not understand Kiswahili. I've learned, I've been with these guys, not much, but there are things God has taught me. The language you use, there are angels who will get it. But there are specific angels. They will not understand the language of man. They will understand the language of heaven. And the language of heaven in prayer is speaking in tongues. Amen. Say, bless his, bless the Lord you, his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening to the voice of his word. You speak the word, you pray the word, you will get quick answers. They may delay, but they will come to pass. Glory be to God. Verses 21. Bless you the Lord, all you his host, you ministers of his that do his pleasure. Doing the pleasure of God, it is the word and prayer coming together. The more you pray, the more you become closer to God. When you don't pray, there is a distance. So there will be no connection for God to answer your prayers. So number three, Satan is powerful if you don't pray. You give a door to Satan. He becomes powerful against you. And how will he become powerful? He will look for, for accusation for your past mistakes. Yes, he becomes powerful like that. He looks for past mistakes. How is it happening? Okay. Let's go to Revelation. Let's go to Revelation. Hallelujah. Re Le Revelation. I'm trying to get because I got so many and I want to get just a few. Amen. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. Because of time. I even don't know how long I am. Okay. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. This is what the Bible says. Hallelujah. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. And prevailed not, neither was there found any more in heaven. Listen, prayer is the price. For your prayers to be answered, you have to pray as a price. There is a price. Pray. Pray. Don't give up. If there is a problem, continue praying until you see results. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12 and verses 8, verses 10, because we have read 7, 8, and 9. The Bible says, okay, verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast into the earth, and his angels cast out with him. Verses 10, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses them before our God day and night. Your past is the door. Satan will always use, even when you pray and you are fast, 
and you have not confessed your sins one to another to your pastor according to 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 to, to James chapter 5 the bible says in James chapter 5 you confess your sins one to another yes listen one to another the bible says in verse 16 John 5, uh, 5 verse 16 confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed when you confess you are healed and satan will not find a door to attack your prayer so you pray and you confess and you hide your past and your prayers will be answered the effective prayers of a righteous man are man the effective prayers of a righteous man are man the devil will look for your past mistakes Okay, go to John to 1st Corinthians, 2nd Corinthians as I finish. This is quite big. You really have to confess your sins. 2nd Corinthians in chapter 5, 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 and verses the last one 27. This is what the Bible says, 21. 2nd Corinthians 5 and 21. so that we pray that God will show us mercy for he has made him to be sin for us God became a sinner for us who knew no sin that he might be made the righteous of God in him that we might be Jesus became a sinner he never committed adultery he never stole he never was jealous he was a pure person because he came as a person yet he was god the bible says he became all that you were so that you might be made holy and righteous amen holy and righteous yes okay isaiah isaiah 118 the bible says that when we confess our sins one to another maybe i'll continue next time from there the bible says in verses 18 come now Let us reason together says the Lord though your sins be as scarlet they shall be as white as snow though they be red like crimson they shall be as wool finally first John I'm trying to show you that for you to to enter into the word that speaks in in that we have been given the weapons of warfare they are not carnal you must be sanctified your past must be sanctified and this is where god will show you mercy and when he shows you mercy then god will start answering your prayers i'm not saying that our prayers are delayed because of only that there are so many things that make i don't know whether i'm not getting it first john chapter 1 first john and then we pray first john chapter 1 this is what the bible says in verses 8 if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us and also my editor will write a clear siastic 7 and verses 20 because of time he will put it there verse 9 if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness verse then listen again if we say that we have not sinned we make him a liar and his word is not in us amen for few seconds we are going to tell the lord wipe away my past oh god i am going to deal with the special cases so that god can answer your prayers amen wipe away my sins take away my past between me and my past let there be a valley or a trench or a crack that the enemy will not use it against me shatarabo shekeperia talabade Manta la beza katu pro satia reke toko bakate pro zika le para peri tala bo zagata pare pale tala badia I plead the blood of Jesus I capo shata the blood of Jesus to erase every past that the enemy is using as a door against our lives that when we are about to go up he is pulling us down he has held us like he held job reposata labadi prozadia satan held job mantala bente puza gade my pozata leba toto prozia taibadia but there was no where that he found him in jesus name amen 
Father, in the name that is above every other name, today I am dealing with our past that Satan have always used as a, a gate or a door to attack us, to hinder you from answering our prayers, just like Joshua. When your time came, the Bible says in Zechariah chapter 3 and verses 3, now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spoke to those that stood before him, saying, Take away his filthy garments from him. And to him he said, Behold, I have, ca I have caused your iniquity to pass from you, and I will clothe you and change you, your remnants. The Bible says that, And when Satan came to resist him, in verse 1, and he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan with his stand in him at his right hand. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, O Satan. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is not this a brand plucked out of fire? Joshua was clothed with filthy clothes. His time had come to be clothed with the remnants that we are pure that we are of a priest, that we are of great reveration and his season. And Satan stood to resist him. And the Bible says, and the Lord rebuked Satan. And what Satan did not want Joshua to receive, Joshua received it. I am asking you, Father, to help us and to show us mercy and to forgive us. And let our past be wiped away from us in Jesus' name. Amen. Kindly, I'm still asking you, partner with me, support me. The reason why I ask you for finances, it is because I want you to be blessed. Give me your 1,000, give me your 500, and God is going to bless you. This is my pay bill number 400-222. My account number, it is 173-9983 hash. Send your transaction and you are offering your tithes to this number, 0746553997. It is on your screen. God bless you and do you good. Always remember that where there is a prophet, there is a testimony. And by the hand of Apostle Damaris, signs and wonders and miracles are your portion today. Your past is erased in Jesus' name. Amen.